Blog Talk Radio. Hello everyone, this is Chrisom, and I'd like to welcome you to this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. And uh, today, I would like to welcome you from this midnight broadcast from Besançon, France, which is uh, right near the, the uh, Switzerland border, on the eastern borders of France. And uh, I would like to thank my gracious hostess, Magdalinda Deus, uh, for allowing me to, to uh, you know, spend the night at her house and to be able to broadcast uh, from, her, from her sacred space here in Besançon, France. So thank you, Magdalinda Deus. I'd also like to thank Amelia Centaro, and I'd like to bring Amelia on. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Curzon. Good to hear you. Good to hear you too, and uh, I would just like to to uh, thank you, Amelia uh, and John and Jonathan and Emma, uh, for such a wonderful and and educational, exciting, beautiful, fun trip in Ireland <laughs> the past few weeks. So thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. We were delighted that you visited us and that you stayed with us. It was a great pleasure. So thank you for that. So I'll yeah, well, begin, yeah. if I may. Sure. Well, I begin with my announcements. Okay. The first announcement I'd like to, to make is to bring your um, awareness to where you can make a donation to support the work that CRISM does. And if you go to a site, wwwascension kundalini.blogspot.com you will be able to make a donation there if you are in a position to do so and of course if that is what you would like to do there's a donate button there and it is very very easy to use and um, donations aren't um, expected but donations are indeed very welcome because this is how the work that Chris has done is supposed it does is supported and it is his only means really of of being supported in a financial way and another Mm -hmm. announcement that i'll just introduce you to would be um if you would like to phone in you can ring the call number and it is usa 347-934-0026 and if you have a question for Chrism or a comment to make about any aspect of the Kundalini awakening process, well then please do ring in 347-934-0026 and I would be delighted to put you through to Chrism. The chat room is up and running and we have some guests already logged in. I can see Julie is there and Steve is there and some other guests are also there that have numbers after them so you're all very welcome indeed and again if you have any questions or comments to make please do write type them in and I can let Chrism know um, what you are saying also I would appreciate if you would let us know about the sound quality if somebody maybe Julie could do that or somebody uh, when Chrism starts speaking and that that everything is going well also, I have no announcements myself to make now about um, seminars, but Rosemary will probably be on in a little while, and she will be able to make an announcement about her seminar that she is organizing in Minnesota at the end of September. So I look forward to hearing from her later. So that's it, Prism. Um, okay, well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for making those announcements, Amelia. Um, I will. I, I see Rosemary is on right now, so I'm going to bring her on. And uh, I would like to thank you. Hello, Rosemary. Hi there, Kristen. Good afternoon. Good um, afternoon to you as well. And I would like to, first of all, I'd like to come right out and say thank you very much to you, Rosemary, and also to Eileen Laurel for yes. both of you, uh, you know, working hard to organize that seminar in Minnesota. So if there's anybody listening that would be interested in attending a Kundalini Awakening seminar in Minnesota, then I would like you to contact uh, Rosemary Goliath or Eileen Laurel. And, and I will not give your phone number out, Rosemary, but if you can give your email that you would like to be contacted with, and I know that Eileen can be reached at Kundalini Living at gmail.com, I believe. Is that right, Rosemary? 
I have uh, something else, other address for her, but um, she could let you know that too. My address is Rosemary G at usinternet.com. Would you like to make the announcement about your seminar? Yes, yes, please. The the seminar in September is September 27th and 28th, and Eileen and I have been working the last few weeks especially to find as many places as we can get in the information about the the seminar. I have the video of uh, Kundalini and have set a couple times to do that already, and I intend to do that through the summer. And it's, it's just delightful the conversation you have, you have, we're having. You have video. You have video of Kundalini, Rosemary. We have the Kundalini DVD. That's its name, Kundalini. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, you have the DVD of the Kundalini movie. I see. Movie, ah, yes. yes, great, great, great. So okay. That okay. will be part of it. And time for questions and my to share my experience. So, it, it's it's a it's a wonderful experience to be doing this. And Eileen had done this in 11 when I did the seminar, so she has a lot of contacts yet that people who remember her, and it's a great blessing. And let me let me go ahead and bring Eileen on here. And I think, hello, Eileen. Hi, Chrism. How are you t- uh, this afternoon for you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. It's beautiful here. It, it is oh, Kundalini Living at, at Gmail dot com, right? No, no, it's uh, what is it? It's e l o r o five five at yahoo dot com. Oh, I see. So, so, but that is that account that I just mentioned is an active account, correct? No, I don't have an email for my Kundalini Living. I don't have. I have an e Kundalini at Gmail dot com. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And I just want to thank both you and Rosemary, uh, you know, for organizing it and, and, uh, you know, starting to put this together. So anybody in the Midwest or even on the East Coast or internationally Mm. coming down from Canada, uh, Mm -hmm. this is a good opportunity for, for to expose yourself to Kundalini awakening and all the the, the beauty and joy and excitement that that that, that uh, can hold for you. So anyway, I just want to thank the two of you very much, and I have to tell you that I'm my, I'm holding my voice a bit low here because uh, Magdalene does have neighbors, and I don't want to wake them up as it is uh, midnight oh, here. You're coming in very clear. This is the most clear. Yes. I've heard you in a long time. I don't know yes. what's okay. different, but it's really nice. <laughs> really nice. Well, that's good to hear. And Thank can you. I, Thank I you. want to say one other thing, Chris. If you don't, if, can I say one other thing? Please, please, please do. Okay, um, it's it's been very interesting reconnecting with people that I worked with two years ago for the seminar, and there seems to be uh, a, a larger audience more interest in Kundalini, and that's so refreshing. So I just wanted to mention that. Well, I do, I, think, I do think I, I think things people are starting to wake up, and so I think this is the time. This is the time for Kundalini. For and sure. I would agree by what Rosemary and I are experiencing. So thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you both. Thank you both for doing that. And I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, put you on... In the in the blue, so we're going to go blue here. Okay, everyone. Uh, yeah. So so those are some of the announcements, and and thank you, Amelia Centara, for making the announcements about the uh, the uh, the donation page and and and, uh, and the other announcements that you've made, and uh, and of course the number for the guest call in is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And uh, as Amelia mentioned, any question you might have about your Kundalini awakening, you're, you should feel free to call in. And and for those uh, I would, in the archives, listening to this program in the archives, I'd like to say hello to you and welcome to you. And, and if you have uh, questions about your Kundalini, you can contact me at kfireforall at yahoo.com. That's K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L at yahoo.com, and I'll be happy to to get back to you about that. Um, So, 
Uh, actually, and, and then I need to, to, to point out the uh, YouTube network. You can reach uh, about, well, when I come back from this trip, there will be over 300 videos uh, on the on the Kundalini awakening process itself, and so I would really encourage anybody that likes to look at a video. These aren't long videos. I don't do really really long videos, but uh, the the videos uh, are proving to help a lot of people. And so I would like to welcome anybody to uh, to come to that. You can go to Chrisum, the number zero Kundalini, and uh, kind of looks like Chrisum O Kundalini and. Uh, Put that into the uh, search box on the YouTube network, and you can you can view those videos. You can also join us at uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems One at yahoogroups.com and Kundalini Healing at yahoogroups.com, as well as Kundalini Awakening Systems uh, Kundalini Awakening Exclamation Point on Facebook, as well as Kundalini Healing at Facebook as well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this show going here now. Um, in many ways, uh, the uh, the rishis of the of the uh, Sanskriti nation that uh, uh, through thousands of years morphed into the the Indian subcontinent or the subcontinent of India, uh, the rishis had a very very good grasp of the Kundalini. I mean, it's it's undeniable, and yet within that context. Other very, very ancient cultures also had a, a very good grasp of the Kundalini, and yet they didn't have the, the, the fine level of oral history that the rishis of, of the Sanskriti nation or Sanskriti civilization had. And, and in many ways, their... their uh, their information was lost to the world. Uh, however, some have been rediscovered, and Amelia Santara and I, this uh, last few days, actually, uh, we went to a place where we, we've, uh, we've talked about it before. We've talked about Newgrange in Ireland, and Newgrange in Ireland definitely has kundalini uh, potentials and expressions, and one does get kundalini phenomena when they go into the passage temple, which the scientists call a passage tomb. Uh, one, will, one, one will get that. I mean, we've had everything from baby spiders to flashes of blue light and this last time I went in with the last uh, seminar I got a big bright blue white star right in my face beautiful 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 and and, and Newgrange is definitely a place a person may want to visit if they are exploring the Kundalini awakening but another place in the same general area is called Noth and it's K-N-O-W-T-H and I went there for the first time with Amelia Centara um, yesterday or the day before, I think it's yesterday, it was amazing, just amazing to see so much kundalini uh, communication uh, put down on stones that weighed over 10 tons. I mean, everything from from the Shakti snake to, to uh, uh, Shiva lingams to to radiance rays and spirals. And it was just absolutely amazing. And the energetic discharge from that site is just extreme. Uh, as I have been doing a lot lately, went straight into bliss, you know, and uh, just kind of froze there for, for the bliss to take its effect. I would really, really recommend that for those of you in Europe who have the opportunity maybe to take a, 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 a little mini holiday and, and come on over to, uh, to Ireland and, and check out North there, uh, it, it's, a, it's an exceptional site and it does, it does give out a penetrative energetic frequency that you will feel. It's just amazing, and, and uh, I'll kind of leave it at that. But it, these folks also knew about the Kundalini. It's very, very clear in their communications. They knew about Kundalini. They knew about the idea of as above, so below, as within, so without. They knew it to such a degree that they would, 
they would chisel their artwork into these these megalithic stones, and they would chisel them on both sides of the stone. The side that was showing outward to the to to the seeing eye, but they would also chisel it on the inside, the inside that nobody of a physical nature is seeing. This is a real example of the as within, so without uh, uh, equation. And uh, I'd like to, uh, Amelia to come on and, and talk about her experiences there. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Curzon. Um, well, it's amazing, really, because when we went to Nos, um, I had had such wonderful experiences in Newgrange. I was wondering what it would be like. And when you go into the site, there is a huge mound, the, the main mound. And from the moment that I went in there um, and began to walk, I could feel, you know, this frequency coming off that. I could feel the energetics of it. And it went straight to my heart and actually to, to my whole being. And it was there the whole time, not just, um, it was amazing. It really was amazing. And um, while I didn't feel bliss in the way that Chrism did, I felt way, I felt, I did feel bliss in the sense that my heart was joyful and I could feel this beauty within me and this vibration. And as we walked around and looked at the stones, there would have been some stones that really spoke to me, you know, that I got, whoa, again. And there would be a flow of um, just, I mean, penetrative. It's a very good way of describing it, actually. And it would just, you know, move into me. And it was, it was absolutely beautiful. There was an absolutely palatable discharge coming from those stones. Um, and it was quite amazing. And I would really, I mean, I don't think it's fair to say one site is more than the other, but this one has its own signature, I suppose, is a way to, is a way to put it. And it is a very, very strong one. I loved the fact that there was this big, huge stone and the man that was giving us the, um, the tour or was telling us about the site was, as Quizzen was saying, they told us that they used to chisel and, I mean, this is just done with, you know, by hand. And it's quite amazing um, the work that would have to be done to create these um, spirals, you know, which are actually beautifully done. And the spiral, whatever design was on the inside, was never seen by people until they began to, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, uh, help the site, improve the site. That was when they discovered that on the inside were also these beautiful designs. And it immediately came to me, you know, as within, so without. They, it, it was just incredible, really. And I would, as Prison said, I would recommend that if you were in a position to come um, to the sites that you do so, because it's a communication not just from the people, I feel, that um, lived back then and created this, and were in communion with their kundalini. Also, with my own kundalini, um, there was a beautiful connection and a beautiful communication as well. And being with yeah. Susan, of course, in a site like that was also wonderful. So. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. And it was amazing to be there with you as well, Amelia. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your, for your feedback on that. It looks like uh, Rosemary has a question. Is this true? Rosemary, I have, do you have a question? Yeah. I, I would like to leave a message with uh, Amelia. I'm I'm sorry to interrupt what you're what you're saying, oh, Chris. I'm not at all. Not at all. Not at all, my dear. I'll put you right on over there. Okay. And and uh, and and so you know these megalithic uh, civilizations and the civilizations of the Rishis uh, were actually quite profound in their ability to to work with the kundalini and through the kundalini and to to really be able to communicate to future uh, people uh, what that language would be uh, in, in a language that is pictorial uh, much you know 
uh, you know, similar to Egyptian uh, hieroglyphics and yet of a, of a completely different culture and yet chiseled on the rocks to last for, for many, many, many millennia. Uh, so really, it's really only new to, to us and, and to the people who are awakening suddenly in this time. As, uh, as Eileen mentioned, um, you know, people are starting to wake up and it is extremely important that they get, you know, the appropriate kind of information to help them awaken in a safe and sane way. And this doesn't include a psych ward. This doesn't include being addicted to pharmaceutically uh, created drugs or, or medicines. Uh, this basically includes just giving people a level of information that they can have and that they can hold and that will that they can use and feel the effect of this information upon their kundalini awakening. What's been happening a lot lately, at least uh, within the people that are contacting me, is entity possession or attempted entity possession of an individual. And I just want you to say, I just want you to know that, that you don't want to listen to anything that a voice in your head is telling you to do. This voice is what I refer to as an entity. Sometimes you'll see a physical or a physical-like form, but much of the time it'll just be a voice in your head saying such and such and is such and such, and it's absolutely false. And even if it is true, it will eventually lead to some sort of a test of your ability to discern the truth from the lie. And, and uh, you know, it's not always easy to do that. And sometimes the blowback from making that mistake, the mistake of, of, of not knowing the truth from the lie, can be quite severe. Uh, so I just want you to know that uh, trust your kundalini. And the kundalini will not typically come to you in a voice. It will come to you in a voice. Uh, as I mentioned in the other show, it'll come to you as a lady in red or a blonde woman or or a, a, a man with brilliant blue eyes or a wolf or a tiger or a serpent or a spider or, you know, any of the top top, top of the pyramid uh, um, kundalini animals, uh, but typically not as a voice. So really be aware of that. Know that I'm not saying it's impossible, and you know, I'm not speaking in absolutist terms because the Kundalini isn't, it can do anything it wants. And if a person's karma dictates that they have a voice in their head that is of the Shakti, well, then of course that will be what it is. But I'm, you know, it is far from common. It is far from common. Now, you'll be guided uh, through through a very strong intuitive influence by the kundalini as well but but the kundalini doesn't cuss at you it doesn't try to manipulate you it doesn't try to to uh hurt others by using you as that tool it doesn't do any of these things and so i want you to be very clear in your discernment of your kundalini awakening process about what is typically probable and what isn't and having a voice in your head telling you to hurt people is not the kundalini. Okay, it is not the kundalini. It is, it is a, a discarnate entity. And because your reality may not have included, uh, you know, talking to a spirit or having a spirit communicate to you in the middle of your head for no reason, you know, it can be kind of earth shattering, and that can kind of lead you into religion. You might just all of a sudden get religion real quick, and that won't help you so much either because it will just. just you know, it'll it'll call itself God, and then anything that God tells you to do, then it will expect you to do. So, uh, if you, you an example of this is that new movie. If you go see the new movie Noah, you know uh, uh, Russell Crowe's out there. He's Noah, and God isn't speaking to him with words. God speaks symbols and through uh, some some overt phenomena, thanks to Hollywood. Uh, but uh, just like that, the Kundalini will not typically give you words, typically, typically. And so to help you discern through that, don't, don't respond to any kind of a voice in your head that is telling you to do this or to do that. Even if, it's, if it feels loving and, and, and joyful, it shouldn't 
be happening. Somebody is crossing over and, and trespassing into your headspace. And I would like you to really, really uh, consider this. Consider this and, uh, and ignore it as much as you can. Trust the Kundalini and the Kundalini alone or a teacher that the Kundalini sends you to. And it doesn't have to be me. It can be anybody that the Kundalini sends you to. Uh, sometimes the Kundalini will send you into a, a situation uh, that would be teaching such as yoga or, say, a yoga retreat or a Vipassana retreat or, or even, uh, you know, a certain kind of career choice such as uh, uh, business or the military or something like that. It doesn't mean that that is going to be your career. It's just that it has teachings that the Kundalini uh, sees is, is positive for your spiritual evolution, however that may occur for you. Okay, so trust the Kundalini in how it is beginning to direct the different frequencies of information and energy that come to you in an expanded format through the actual awakening process. Uh, so it looks like, um, uh, Amelia, can you come on? Let's see. Sorry, Chris, and it's quite slow. I'm here. It's quite slow. Okay, yeah. So if you have a question from the chat room, can you go ahead and just pipe it through, regardless of whether I'm in that uh, that space of just the, the the Shakti talking through me? Yes, I will do that, Chris. And so far, no questions, but we have a, a few more guests. Tim has joined us, and Vashti has joined us, and some other people. So welcome, everybody. And if you have any questions please do write them and I will relate them to Chrism. Okay, Chrism, I will do that. Thank you, thank you. Nice to, to, to see that you're that you're here with us, Julie and Fasci and and Tim and and uh, some of the others that uh, Amelia mentioned, including those guests that have numbers after their names. Uh, thank you for joining us this, uh, in this conversation. Now, as as we come back into the ancient uh, peoples and how they related to this, uh, it seemed to be a far more less resistant paradigm of, of their reality than it is with ours. Here, here in this society, in the Western technological society, we seem to have to fight tooth and nail in order to uh, have the Kundalini awakening without being subjected to uh, electroshock therapy or chemical, um, you know, therapy or sedative, you know, sedative type therapies uh, without being labeled as crazy or nuts or things of that nature. Uh, this is, you know, and I'm not saying that the ancients had it any easier, but I know that I know that we're going through that right now. And I just want to welcome those of you who may be listening to this right now or in the future as your Kundalini awakening experience continues. Uh, validate it for yourself. Find a different way. Uh, you know, you don't have to listen to me. You don't have to, you know, any of my information. You can just take it or leave it. But find a way to validate your experience as not being crazy. Okay, if you're having, uh, you know, three, at least three kundalini awakening phenomena, then begin to validate the kundalini within you. Don't just try to, don't try to continuously disprove it. Okay, because it won't fit with scientific uh, understandings or medical understandings or psychiatric understandings. Because I can tell you right now, it won't fit that way. It will not fit that way. It will not dance to that music it dances to its own music within you and as you begin to lower your resistance to the kundalini you'll begin to dance to that music too and it's a beautiful dance and it's a dance that's going to last the rest of your life for the rest of your life and into the next expression because kundalini is of this world and not of this world at the same time. So the aspect that is not of this world will just collect the aspect that is and bring it along with you as you go into your next expression. And what I mean by that is as you die, 
your kundalini will come with you. It's one of those things that will do that. Uh, I can't really think of any other, it's such a tangible quality that does except for your emotions and your memories. And even the memories have a have the capacity to fade. Okay. But kundalini doesn't. It just keeps on going, keeps on going. And and I want you to know this as you as you begin to embrace your phenomena, as you begin to embrace your, your energetic equation, as you begin to embrace the the new experiences that begin to come up uh through through you and into you. And one thing I'm gonna talk a little bit about that I haven't talked about before and it it's it's a propos to the conversation about the entities and, and possessions and things of that nature. If you can at all, um, if, if you know for a fact that you're in the middle of a Kundalini awakening, say the first five years of it, I'm going to suggest that you don't go into haunted places. Uh, you don't need to pick up any other parasites that might just want to hitch a ride on a person. Um, and, and, you know, they see you quite clearly. You may not see them yet, but you you are actually quite visible to discarnate entities. Amelia and I went into a castle. I'm going to tell you the name of the castle so you don't go into it. <laughs> okay. And I know, and I know some of you are going to take that up as a challenge, and that's fine. That's your choice. But I'm going to suggest that people don't go into the Kilkenny Castle if you're Kundalini Awakened. Uh, this is the Kilkenny Castle in, in uh, Ireland, simply because the onslaught of entity interaction is, 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 is quite, quite palpable. And it can make you dizzy and it can make you feel sick and it can, you know, all of these things. And, and even though the town there won't say anything about the hauntings that are occurring there, uh, what, is, what has been posted on the web is that they put in an electronic uh, human counter so that every time you walk through the door this electronic counter counts you you know you pass through the light and, and uh, it counts you And when they close the castle up at night as soon as they close it the counter is counting over a hundred people coming into the castle every night when it's absolutely empty and, and uh, they they returned the machine to the manufacturer. The manufacturer checked it out, said it's working just fine. They put it back in, and once again, uh, over 100 uh, extra people every night when the castle is closed. And, and this can give you an idea about the level of duration that some of these really old castles can have. Uh, it's, it won't be exciting, believe me. It won't be exciting, uh, they don't let you take pictures. They don't. They ask you not to take pictures. Some people have, and they have. Of course, they've they've come up with uh, some uh, some ghost evidence there. But you know, from a Kundalini awakened standpoint, entities are a dime a dozen. It's not a big deal, and it, and actually, it's not something that I would I would uh, suggest that you go out and look for. Okay, you know, Amelia and I, we went in there. We, you know, first we saw a nice castle. <laughs> But as soon as you go through the door, oh my gosh, you got squashed. Here's uh, here's Amelia. She'll be telling you about her experience there. Hi, Amelia. Hi, can Hello. you hear me, Kristen? I, I can hear you. Can you hear fine. me? Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Actually, what's interesting about this castle is that it's very preserved. It's being reconstructed. It's beautifully presented. It has rooms. It's huge. Um, if you Google Kilkenny Castle, you'll see it. It's not in any way pitched to be a haunted castle. There's no talk about hauntings, nothing. So we just went along to it. As I wanted Chrism to see it because it is a beautiful example of a castle that um, started in the 12th century, I think, and, you know, was gradually added to. And it is a very powerful family that lived there in actual fact. Anne Boleyn, that married King Henry VIII, I think she was his first wife, came from that family. So we went there with no expectations and with nothing around hauntings or anything like that. And when we went into the beginning of the castle, into the, into the entrance part, boom, 
I was hit immediately with this in, intense, I could just feel entities everywhere. I don't visually see, but I could feel them, and I could feel the different energies from different entities that were there, and it was very overpowering. It made me very dizzy um, to the point where I had to hold on to the, to, the, to the wall for a moment or two. Now, by the time we got down to the end of that corridor, I was climatized. I mean, in the sense that I was grounded again and I was, I was fine. I mean, they were still there, but, you know, it was fine. I was ignoring them anyway. But then we went into the next, we call it, area, and the exact same thing happened again. And I have never, you know, been in a place where there were so many entities. I mean, they were nonstop, continuously coming. And when, was it the second or third area, um, I felt. Will I speak about this, Crism? Um, uh, you spoke about it to me. Yeah, you got you got smacked yeah. on the back. I, I, I think. got smacked on the back because I just went, oh, you know, when that happened, it was very unexpected, and it was a definite smack in the in the upper back, and there was nobody there. And then a little while later, I was touched in the back a couple of times gently. And then I also had the experience of um, hot needles, I suppose, as a way of, you know, that kind of electric shock sort of thing. Yeah, it um, feels like cobwebs. Point, feels like yeah, and electric, electric cobwebs when you walk through them. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's a sensation and it's actual and it is tactile. And I don't recommend that people do it, but uh, go ahead. I mean, continue. Yeah, so, I mean, we... Um, it was very interesting, lots of portraits and lots of things to listen to. But at one point, we were in a big um, hall, I suppose, with lots of portraits. And I really, I'd had enough. <laughs> I was happy to go, not through fear or anything, but I just thought, you know what, this is done. So very soon so, after so she's, that, she's, left. She's standing, she's standing at the entrance to this large picture gallery, and she looks at me and she goes, do we have to go in there? <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I went in and went and she came in after me and we just looked at it and you know, it was just uh, it was so, so packed with entities that it it it's not a thrill. I mean it, I I understand for Ghostbusters and people who don't have the Kundalini, therefore they don't have such continuous contact with entities if, if if that is part of a person's kundalini equation yeah then it can be a real big thrill and, and all of that but boy i tell you it just gives you gives you a headache you know to have to just walk through that it's like walking through a fog of uh, of many 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 many, many different consciousness hmm. and, and, you and can I feel felt the it. different you can feel the yeah. different and um, you know emotions or energies of, of where the person is at, you know, or, or and some of them were from different eras and that's all felt and it does give you a headache and it does, you know, it's not, it's, you know, it's not something I would actively seek out, I have to say, no. Yeah, and, I, and, and, and this, uh, thank you, thank you, Amelia. Uh, this is exactly right, it's just as Amelia said, um, it is not something that, that you want to actively seek out, certainly not within your kundalini awakening uh, experience, simply because you get to a point where you don't need to attract negative phenomena or phenomena that's going to cause you continuous disturbance. You know, I mean, if that's, if, if that's what you're looking for, if you're a person that is looking for phenomena all the time, then, you know, you may end up paying, paying a kind of a stiff price for that search. Yes, Amelia? Yes. Um, there is a question here from Steve, so if I may read it out, Prism? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It says, I talk with my kundalini daily. Part of that communication is asking my kundalini, or oh, just moved, is asking my kundalini to become more conscious with me, sorry, becoming more conscious within, and to play an active part in my life expression. Any chance of something else coming in to take advantage of that opening? Absolutely, Steve. Okay, okay. No, 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 I understood, I understood. Uh, absolutely, Steve. 
and in any and I know I know that that you know you you do a lot of different uh, venues of spiritual application and spiritual practice, and um, you know that attracts a lot of entities alone. That in and of itself, certainly Reiki does. Uh, and, and so, yeah, as you as you reach out to your to your kundalini with your conscious mind, sending out a, a verbal intention of oh, you know, speak to me or or become more more uh, uh, shall we say uh, active in in my ex- spiritual experiences. Yeah, a discarnate entity can come in there and go, hey, Steve, this is your shakti. Yeah, I'm finally answering you, and I'm I've been really busy lately, and. And you know, I just I just heard you, and you know, it can just begin to weave this little story about how it, how you're so good and so wonderful and so perfect, and but you got to do everything that I tell you to do, Steve. <laughs> so, but Steve, I know I I know that that uh, that you're mature enough within your spiritual evolution that you know to to practice the noble behaviors. Uh, and and look uh, and discern through the the veil of the noble behaviors before you make any kind of a decision whether or not it's real or not. Shakti will typically come to a person through uh, strong intuitive uh, leanings towards towards the noble behaviors. Uh, it will also come in a person's dream uh, along the lines of what I've mentioned in some of the other conversations we've had here. Um, it will come to you, but it won't necessarily come to way the way your ego wants it to come. Okay, I, you know, we're all very, very visual people. We're all very, very vocal people. We like to talk. We like to hear. We like to see. But it's not necessarily going to, uh, you know, come to a person along those expected lines of communication. Not saying that it never will. Just saying that it's. You know, it is typically, in my interactions with, with many, many, many people, in my own experience of my own Kundalini awakening, it goes outside of the normal five sense expectation. It goes it doesn't want to be, a, uh, you know, for you to have the expected five sense interaction with with itself as it begins to guide you through your process. So, so I would really, uh, if you, if I think you should turn it around, Steve. I think you should bring yourself more into the the Kundalini Shakti and what it wants to do with you, and and do that by virtue of the noble behaviors: forgiveness, tolerance, love. Happiness, joy, compassion, service to others, things of that nature. Uh, insert yourself into the Kundalini rather than asking the Kundalini it, to insert itself into you. It's already there. You've already got it going. Okay, so now, now that the blend is happening, make it stronger. Make it make yourself. Uh, uh, let me rephrase it. Put yourself into a position of of joining with the Shakti rather than asking the Shakti to join with you. That already occurred. Okay, that already occurred by virtue of, of your karma, by virtue of your practices, by virtue of, of your spiritual evolution that has already occurred. Now, it's not to say that, that, you know, oh, you're done. Well, you're certainly not done. There's a long ways to go. Kundalini is a is a blessedly long and involved and, and sometimes complicated and often simple journey. But you, you know, I think it is better for a person to to insert themselves into the Kundalini by virtue of, say, practicing the safety protocols for Kundalini awakening and by virtue of expressing the noble behaviors which are also part of the safety's uh, protocols as well. So... So, yeah, and if you have a follow-up question about this, Steve, feel free to ask because I'd be happy to answer it for you. And anybody else that may have a have a question about uh, their Kundalini Awakening experience, they can do so. Yes, Amelia? Yes, Steve is actually typing. Oh, he stopped. <laughs> I was going to say Steve is typing, so I'm sure he's typing again. And also, Chrism, 
devotion, I think, would be part of a way that that this could be done as well, would it not? Well, or so it is for oh. me anyway. Well, d- devotion, devotion in and of itself is a is a huge step in the right direction with the Kundalini. But that's such a, you know, I, I always. I always hesitate a little bit before I suggest people go into devotion because it's so anti, it's an anti-behavior with regards to the Western technological society that I certainly know from my experience uh, being raised in the United States, uh, you know, be your own man, don't, don't, don't get on your knees to anybody or thing, you know, you, we're really taught. Uh, I think in, in many ways in, in the United States at least and in other countries I'm sure uh, that you don't uh, pray to a person you don't pray to a to a, a, a you know a, an intangible energetic force an intangible implies that it's it's not to be sensed through the five senses devotion is the strongest fastest and safest way to come into the Kundalini, in addition to the uh, to the noble behaviors and the safeties, uh, I didn't put devotion into the safeties simply, be, you know, for the reason I've just been stating. Uh, the people in India know about devotion. You know, it is an absolute part of their culture, part of their society, and they are a they're. The amount of saints that they have, and the amount, you know, everybody from Yogananda to Vivekananda to Ramakrishna to, I mean, you, you just, just Sri Aurobindo, who I, I mentioned uh, last week. Uh, you know, you, I think you'd be very hard pressed to find uh, similar uh, expressions of Kundalini awakening in the Western societies. And one of the reasons why they have such a, a, a plentitude. Of Kundalini awakened teachers is through their acceptance and practice of devotion to the Kundalini, and whatever teacher that Kundalini may lead you to, to to come to, and it does, it leads you to a teacher because it knows you're going to need to hear it in the flesh and in the physical and through your ears, into your spinal cord and into the chakra system and, and further into the energetic anatomy. Did you have? Steve has- yeah. Yes, Steve has written here, cousin. Um, Tears are coming with my knowingness and what I feel from you. Thank you so much. Happy tears. (laughs) Tears of bliss, my friend. Tears, tears of bliss. Right back to you. I was. I tell you what. I, I, uh, I've been having bliss so much lately. It's happening on the airplane. I um, I'll be reading something here in a little bit to to, to hopefully give some of the some some of the listeners uh, bliss as well. Uh, I want you to pay attention to the voice, to the shakti in my voice. Feel the timbre of the voice. Feel the sound of the voice. Close your eyes and feel. Close your eyes and see. Feel the kundalini coming into you this way and allow it to do so. Kundalini, as, as far as I can, uh, yeah, I, I've had quite a bit of experience. I think it's like up to 24, 25 years now inside of a kundalini awakening. And I know that's not the, the longest that anybody's had, but it certainly isn't the shortest. Um, kundalini is there for you and it. It is working for you. It it wants you to succeed in this. It wants you to have this. It wants you to have this bliss. It wants you to have this experience. It wants you to feel the love, the joy. It wants you to begin to actively embrace your spiritual evolution by the awakening of grace of the kundalini within you. It is, yes, yes, it will challenge you. I guarantee you, it will challenge you. It will not be the easiest ride that you've ever had in your life. You may get bucked off that pony every now and again, but you'll also be getting right back on it. Okay? I don't want you to feel like... I don't want you to feel like you need to be in control uh, of, of your spiritual evolution, because you're not. You are not. Kundalini is. So, if it's awakened or activated within you right now, Really, you know, take take 
the initiative out of your ego and give it to the Kundalini. As I was saying to Steve, you know, insert yourself into the Kundalini. Give yourself to the Kundalini. And right on the heels of what Amelia Centara mentioned with regards to devotion, devotion is one of the safest and strongest and most effective ways to bring yourself into the Kundalini awakening experience, but also to answer and to find the answers that you may seek from the Kundalini by joining more rapidly and more thoroughly with it. By intentionally letting go of your resistance and intentionally letting go of your fears. Because I have to tell you, the Kundalini is going to test your fears. It will come at you in, in, you know, in ways that it knows represents your fear potential. It knows you. It knows you better than you know yourself. It's been with you since birth and before birth. You know, it was there as you were choosing that body that would have patterns of probabilities that would create the, the awakening or the activation of the kundalini to happen at all. Think about that. Think about that and, and let that guide you. Let that be your guidance. Devotion is very strong, and, and I'm, a, I'm a full advocate of devotion. I was in devotion. You know, I came, I, you know, once I, once I found out what it was and, you know, paid attention to what was being uh, communicated to me, not through words, not through words, but certainly through dreams and certainly through some of the paranormal phenomena that was occurring, you know, my, my, my awakening journey took much longer than, than Steve's or, or other people's, you know, who may be listening because it's just a, a paucity of information. You know, I didn't have any information what's going on. And so I had to learn to pay attention to this force rather than be afraid of it, rather than, you know, put myself into a psych ward, rather than, you know, get myself addicted to drugs or alcohol or whatever, which wouldn't help it, just make it worse. Yeah, Amelia. Kim asks a question, and it is, why would Kundalini instigate fear if it wants us to know our bliss? Ah, well, that's a good question, Tim. Thank you. Thank you for asking it. Kundalini wants you to know fear because you cannot... Well, let me, let me back up here. The Kundalini awakening process is very similar to building a divine temple inside your body. And that divine temple... Uh, isn't to be built with bricks that are made of fear. And so one of the most effective ways of taking a person out of fear is to help them face it head on and to help them do it. And so the kundalini will definitely bring you fear so that you can take yourself through it. Once you start taking the steps in the right direction with facing the fear, the kundalini will reward you almost instantaneously. Say, for instance, um, say you're being chased by a, by a black dog. This is one of the common phenomena of the Kundalini. A black dog with red eyes will be chasing you, and it wants to eat you, wants to kill you, wants to bite you. And when you finally get tired of running away from that thing, and you turn around and you face it, and you hold out your arm and you say, here, take a bite. Boom. Dog disappears, and you're in bliss. Same thing with being eaten by a giant snake. I know this sounds terrible. <laughs> I, I know this sounds. I know how this sounds. Okay, I know how this sounds. But I also know that it's true. It's true. Uh, when you're, you know, when you're, sometimes you'll be cha a person may be chased by a giant serpent, and the serpent will want to eat it. Well, when they turn around and say, "Take me, eat me, go ahead," and it's, and it will it will rear up and it will. Clo open its mouth and close them over you and boom that experience is over and will not return because you have faced your fear you have faced your fear now now it doesn't just come in in the ways of you know being eaten by a dog or a snake it comes with the fear of not having any money uh you know, any kind of a survival based fear whether it's your health if it'll, it'll come to you as a fear of death you know how Oh my God! You know I'm not healthy. I might die tomorrow. What? Oh, what am I going to do? That type of a scenario. So Kundalini helps you realize a way 
through the fear process so that your inner divine temple is composed of, of bricks that are made from your spiritual evolution, from taking fear out of the equation by, by actually experiencing it and then making a choice making a choice to no longer be afraid. When you turn around and you face that dog and you offer it your arm, that's a big, big change from running away from it. And I have to, I also want to, you know, a lot of people have the assumption that Kundalini is all about just bringing you bliss and happy, happy, joy, joy, marshmallows, sugar plum berry. It's not. It's really there to do the hard, difficult work with a person. The hard, difficult work that people don't want to do because it's not happy, joy, joy. It's dealing with those fears. It's dealing with uh, a negative uh, self-talk. It's dealing with uh, the issues, uh, behavioral issues that we may have uh, with regards to how we relate to other people. Dealing with the, the dirt. You know, nothing gets to be swept under the carpet. Nothing gets to be ignored. And the Kundalini is there, and she will not let you ignore it. The, the sacred male, he will not let you ignore it. And yes, Centaur, it looks like you have a question there, my dear. I think that okay. just, um, that just came up, the cursor was over that. Okay, so I don't have a question. Okay. Are you wearing headphones? Are you Say wearing headphones? Again? Are you yes. wearing headphones? Okay, just I'm checking. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, the, the you know to go along, uh, continue along this 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 line. Uh, it's not uh, about being happy all the time. You will get bliss. Oh my gosh, and you'll get to a point. Uh, where bliss is what you feel most of the time. Uh, I w- I'm, as, as, as I mentioned at the beginning of the program, I'm here at uh, Magdalene de Davis' house, and we were walking around Besançon today, and, uh, you know, talking about different things. And one of the things that we talked about was, uh, you know, the, the, the rise and fall of good experiences, and then, you know, the expectation is like, oh, my gosh, you know, I'm having this great experience. And, oh, my gosh, now I know it's going to end. I'm going to feel terrible. And I told her, you don't have to have it. It doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be that way. You can feel joyful all the time, but you have to earn the place to get. You have to get rid of some of the negative self talk some of the negative, uh, and this goes with anybody. This is this is her specifically. This is you know ninety five percent of the Kundalini waking people. We have to learn how to control our thoughts, specifically our thoughts about others and our thoughts about ourselves, because our thoughts about others are a reflection of how we're thinking about ourselves. And the Kundalini knows this. The Kundalini knows this, and, and, and she will bring it into your awareness, and it will not always be a pleasant experience. It will not always be a pleasant experience. But as, as you mature into your awakening experience, as you mature into this Kundalini evolution, yeah, levels of bliss come at you all the time. I, I was in bliss, I cannot tell you, many times today. I Thank God I'm not driving a car. <laughs> All I have to say, she doesn't come to me when I drive, which is nice. In a blissful way, she'll, 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 you know, I get informed if there's a danger, if there's a certain issue, I road ahead, or if there's something wrong with the car, you know, things of that nature. If I'm going the wrong way, you know, things like that, I'll, I'll get a, a, a twinge of uh, intuitive knowing about that. Uh, and, and, and the Kundalini does work with you that way. It won't say, it won't go, oh, Kristen, you've been breaking the speed limit. Oh, that that that's bad car karma for you. She won't do that. She won't talk to you that way. She probably wouldn't joke with you that way either. <laughs> she, she lets me do that, so. <laughs> so, yeah, so so realize that, that you are cared for and you are protected, but you are also challenged. You are challenged, and yet you are also rewarded. For, for meeting those challenges. It's like when you're in 
grade school and, 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 and you know, you, you, you get the test completely right. I mean, every answer, you, you nail it and, and, and the teacher congratulates you and you just feel that great sense of accomplishment. Well, it's much more than that with the Kundalini. It will give you bliss. It will, it will put you into a state of bliss. I had bliss uh, watching a movie today. I had bliss just because of the amount of truth that was being pushed through uh, that movie, which, which uh, you know, and, and so did, so did uh, Magdalene. She had a lot of bliss, too. So it's, it, it's very important for you to realize that this is a full-spectrum Kundalini experience. Full-spectrum meaning that all the goodness that you have to 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 experience and the joy and the bliss and the and and ecstasy is there for you to have but it's also all the negative self talk the, the 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 behaviors that are hurtful towards others the behaviors that are hurtful towards yourself all of those issues are also going to be covered by the kundalini she's not going to leave that alone this isn't a balloon ride straight into bliss. This is this is a this is a this is a full spectrum experience. And so you will be not only I should I, I need to put this into into the conversation here. Not only is your current uh life experience in being tested and being uh uh, expanded by the Kundalini, but she's also helping you meet your karmic responsibilities. The the amount of karma that a person has brought into this life, and certainly if you have a you know when, when a person has a, a Kundalini awakening proclivity happen for them uh, within this life, uh, it is known before they even take the body, the, the physical body that you have right now, or you even took that. You knew that as you entered into that compact, into you know, as you went behind the veil, you were going to have some some fairly rough karmic uh, experiences. Not everybody, and not everybody gets it the same way. We're all unique in our karma, but the karma is also part of the equation that's going to be balanced by the kundalini. Okay. And, you know, getting back to my, my driving, you know, if, if you're a person that's breaking the rules on the road a lot, you know, and you just, uh, the, the rules of the road don't apply to you, well, that is, that is kind of a mark on your integrity. That is a mark on your agreement to, to do the best you can, to be as balanced as you can within the, you know, the many different uh, challenges as a person. Okay, and I'm guilty of that too. I'll, be, I'll come right out there and say it. It hasn't, it hasn't hurt my my awakening, you know. But it hasn't, you know. It doesn't help it to just purposefully break a break a rule that that we've all agreed upon, you know. That like in the states, you know, uh, in in California, for instance, uh, you you know the the top speed typically is 65 miles an hour, whereas you know you go to Arizona, it's 70, 75. Nevada, 70 or 75, but in California, it's 65, and, and so, you know, I'm, I'm, I can move to Arizona, I could move to Nevada, but I choose to stay in California at this time, and so, because I'm making that choice, I'm also making a choice to abide by the rules of the road that pertain to California driving, uh, you know, I'm getting at, you don't get to short circuit your way around your responsibilities, and, you know, it's something for you to consider with regards to how you approach life within a kundalini awakening context. Are you here to break the rules? Are you here to to just do the bliss and not do any of the hard work? Not and I'm not saying I'm not making any uh, any kind of a comment to you, Tim. I think I do. I want to thank you for ask, asking such an excellent question because it's it's something that other people in the archives in the future and, and maybe some of the other people present listening right now are. Are, are you know can wonder about it's like wow you know why would the kundalini want to give me fear and you know why why would that why would that be part of the deal and and as I explained it is part of the deal because you need to get through it you need to get it out of your system and then 
your kundalini awakening temple can proceed onto the next level of its construction within you. Okay? And as we get back to uh, to some of the uh, the conversation I was having about the rishis, uh, they they gave us some great gifts. And I'm going to give you one of these gifts right now, but I'm going to have to walk over there to get it. Hang on a second. You can probably still hear me. Got to come over here to my backpack. Pull it out. And here we are. Coming right back to you. Put my headset on. Here. And uh, let me give you a gift from the Rishis. This is from the Rig. Rig Veda is one of the oldest uh, books in the world. Uh, it was written by the Rishis that were Kundalini awakened for the Kundalini awakened people of the future, but it also helps those people who are not Kundalini awakened uh, come into a greater level of spiritual evolution. And I want to say thank you to the Rishis of the Sanskriti culture some five, six, seven thousand years ago. About the same amount of time, uh, by the way, of those who, who were putting new grange and milk together. Some of you may recognize this, and I'll tell you what it is when I'm finished reading it. Here we go. Body of all, mind of all, spirit of all. May we meditate on the supreme, on the all-pervading radiance of the ultimate source of divine light. May he inspire the innermost thoughts of our hearts. Okay. Anybody know what that is? That's the Gayatri Mantra, for those of you who don't know. get into a lot of Sanskrit work here because I know that most people aren't going to understand the the, uh, the Sanskriti uh, language. But it is beautiful. It is a beautiful, beautiful language. Uh, but right now I'm going to get into some of the the words in English that a, a direct transliteration uh, is suggesting. And this is, you know, all of these are about the Kundalini, these, these selected readings that I'm going to give you right now is about the Kundalini. And here's another one, and this is from the Isa Upanishad, okay? That is perfect. This is perfect. Perfect arises from perfect having taken the perfect of perfects, perfect alone remains. Peace. 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 This is from the Kina Upanishad. All my parts Speech, life, sight, hearing, strength, and senses be fulfilled. Spirit is revealed through every scripture. May I not deny spirit. Spirit has never denied me. May there be no cause for denial. May I never be denied. May the truths which the scriptures proclaim live in me who am at one with spirit. May they live in me. Peace. 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 Okay. This is just a couple of, you know, three examples of what the Sanskriti have left us uh, with regards to their oral history and with regards to the, the effect that their intentions can have in a positive way on our kundalini awakening experience. And also, as you walk around uh, 
the the Newgrange site in Ireland, and as you walk around the mounds in Ireland, similar things are being spoken to you, but they're just not being spoken to you in an oral or written language that you'll readily uh, recognize. They're being spoken to you in a language that is that of symbol, and yet the symbols are cross-cultural. There's just one picture up there that shows divine rays well, when I was doing the, the New York seminar, and hello to all of those who may be listening that uh, were partaking of the, of the New York seminar. Uh, and I'd like to put a special uh, hello to Chris Harris, Chris M. Harris, if she is out there. So hello to you, Chris M. Harris. Uh, I went into a lot of bliss that during the uh, during and before the New York seminar. And one of the the visuals that I was given from the Kundalini was, it was like dipping my head into a ray of sunshine or a ray of light, a divine ray. And as, every time I dipped my head into that ray, I would go into bliss. And so in a way, the Kundalini was allowing me to go into bliss whenever I wanted, but it also knew that I was right in the middle of a seminar, standing up in front of a group of people. Okay. So... <laughs> And it also knows me well enough to know that I'm not going to just, I'm not going to turn into a bliss bunny. But they had that divine ray the way I saw it chiseled into one of the rocks. It was just amazing and it totally floored me when I saw it and I totally made that connection, that immediate connection. And, you know, that was just one of other, of many other, you know, from the spirals to the, to, uh, you know, different uh, symbols of kundalini awakening, eyes, uh, snakes, serpent forms, triangles, things of that nature. And so when you walk around those places, you also receive uh, a poetry or a prayers that are just as evocative and just as devotional and powerful as the words that the, the, the rishis have blessed us with. Okay. And let's see, uh, I've got 47 minutes left, and so I would like to open it up for um, anybody that may have a question about their Kundalini Awakening experience. The number is 347-934-0026. So, yeah, if you've had an experience uh, with the Kundalini, such as Steve mentioned, you know, he's, he's actively interested in getting into his Kundalini more. And what a blessing he is. He has a center in, uh, 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 Steve, would you go ahead and uh, post some of your information about your, your uh, center there and, uh, and relay that to Centara so that I can relay it or she can relay it to the people who are listening, just so people know who you are and where you are and what you do. I would also like to take a moment to compliment Amelia Centara in her therapeutic uh, applications that the Kundalini does through her, and, and this is called Kundalini Infused Therapeutic Touch. And uh, tomorrow she'll be working with cancer patients, which is something that she does once once a week, I believe. And I would like, you know, she had a real big car problem lately, and I would like us uh, to put some prayers out uh, to Kundalini uh, for her car to be fixed for, to, to support the blessed work that she does with cancer patients and people who have been uh, uh, traumatized through illness or through uh, violence. Uh, Amelia Centara does a great, great work upon this planet, far more so than you know just by virtue of her presence on this program and, 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 and her support of this program by it being even here that's Amelia and, and her husband, John. You're listening to this program because Amelia and John made it so. So it's important. It's important for us to maybe give back a little bit to, to her and John so that we... Kundalini can work things in ways that I cannot even begin to describe to you. And if we put out a concerted prayer from Amelia Centara's uh, 
um, a Peugeot, um, uh, Picasso, I guess is. Sorry, sorry. That's okay. Yeah, I don't think you've ever you've ever called it a Peugeot. It's a Citroen. <laughs> I think they're Peugeot. related, though. It's a Citroen. What's the full name of it? It's a 2008. It's a Citroen Picasso Grand. Citroen Grand Picasso. C4. C4 it's called. So we need to put some prayers out for that. Yeah, we need to put some prayers out for that. But I want to thank you for this amazing work you do with the cancer patients and and, and the people that are suffered from domestic violence or just violence in general and you know it's a real blessing that you're giving into the populations not only the kundalini populations but also the 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 the, the non the unawakened populations as well i want i want you to be recognized it's a joy and a privilege it really is i it is i i steve has actually written something he it's the good vibe health center in Pittsburgh, and his, Pittsburgh, it's Pennsylvania. Good okay. com. Yeah, in Pennsylvania. And, and Pennsylvania. they do everything. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, my dear. Absolutely. And and Steve does everything from Reiki, which I guess everybody knows how I feel about Reiki. But he also does EFT, and he does Tibetan uh, bowls, and he does you know a a a, a full range of different. Uh, Practices that are all designed, I think, to to help a person have a, a a a high and strong level of health in their life. Certainly, spiritual health, but perhaps some physical health as well. And I know that uh, Mrs. Jarecki is also uh, heavily involved in that center. And so, I'd like to say blessings to you both. You know, and and Steve, uh, I look forward to seeing you in Minnesota. So yeah, uh, as we continue this conversation, uh, our 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 ancestry from from the Neolithic all the way up to the present time is inclusive of the Kundalini. This current civilization here in the West, which is a, in many ways, it's a dominant. Uh, yes, yes, uh, Amelia. Steve asks the question, Chrism, could you give us a prayer for daily connection with Kundalini? Um, yeah, I think I've written one for that. Um, uh, is Eileen listening? Eileen, can you can you uh, get that prayer going here? I surrender to God. I surrender to... That one, Eileen. yeah, yeah. You're asking, Hi, Eileen. Which one... Hi, are you asking for the Shakti prayer? No, the surrender prayer. Oh, the surrender prayer. I can post it. Read it. Oh, read it now. I have to, <laughs> I have put to put her put on the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have it in a written form, and I, I, you know, when the Kundalini writes these things, you know, I don't get to form a memory engram of it. So, yeah, uh, Steve, as soon as uh, Eileen is able to dig that up, uh, she'll go ahead and read that on the air. Another one that she one that is the Shakti prayer. And uh, I'm going to break one of my rules with the Shakti prayer. Is, is If you're going to say the Shakti prayer once, you need to say it three times. Uh, so... Steve, are you familiar with the Shakti prayer? I think you are if you've been doing the Shakti pot. So I think you've done this last Shakti pot. So you must be familiar with that. Uh, and Centauri, you can pop on if you want and let me know what his response is. Uh, that is a very, very effective prayer. Go ahead, Eileen. I did find it. It's entitled, I Surrender to Love, I Surrender to Truth, I Surrender to God. In my thoughts and actions with myself, and towards others, I give my love and considerations of love towards their well-being and my well-being and towards the highest potentials that we can achieve within the choices we make for the expression of our development towards love and loving and being loved. In the flow of my life, I choose to give health and harmony 
as an expression of love. I choose to have health and reflect health and happiness to those with whom I interact, take full responsibility for my actions and my thoughts and my emotional intentions within the interactions that are expressed by me towards others and towards myself and towards God. I choose to join with divinity and offer love and accept love in the journey towards my conscious understanding of the wholeness that I am. Thank you, Eileen. You read that well, very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to look it up, too, my dear. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, there you have it, Steve. There you have it. That's one that you can do. That's also, I believe, a YouTube, uh, one of the YouTube videos as well. Um, So, yeah, yeah, you can do that. You can, I mean, I can, gosh, the prayer has come. You can make your own prayer, really. Make one that suits you. Make you know some people like to rhyme. As you, some of my poetry is quite rhymy because I hear it in as, as music kind of first, and and uh, and I like to to have some of the lyrics rhyme when I'm when I'm writing that way. Uh, but others, others, don't, you know, you don't need to have a, a, a rhyme prayer. It's helpful to write your own poetry because or your own prayers because it's the kundalini in you write it it's helping you select the phrase it's helping you work with your own level of of um enlightenment and let's not let's not forget that this is what this is about it is an enlightenment process you are becoming enlightened. It's just that, you know, in, in, here in the West, we're so, you know, we flick a switch and the light comes on. Okay? Kundalini isn't the flick of a switch. Kundalini opens a very special quality of, of, of light to a person. But you have to engage the kundalini. You can't be resisting it. You can't be trying to control it. You have to open yourself to you. And by control of you, you will learn what its agenda with you really is. And it isn't to hurt. It's not to hurt you. It's to cleanse you. It's to detox you. It's to bring you into the fullness of your actual true nature. This is what Kundalini is about. I don't care what religion a person practices or or what job they have or how much money they have or don't have. Kundalini is always there with you, working with you, talking with you, helping you, guiding you. And, 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 And as I was mentioning to Tim earlier, it's not all about guiding you to, you know, a beautiful island in the middle of the Caribbean. Sometimes it'll guide you, you know, into your backyard where you need to fix the fence. <laughs> okay. Sometimes it'll it'll guide you into the worst places you could imagine. Only to guide you out of it once you've solved the equations that those worst places are offering to be solved. It's important that you do the hard work, but it's also important for you to validate uh, how the kundalini is with you. Is it giving you pain? And if it's giving you pain, why is it giving you pain? And if and if you're, you're if you're trying to make the pain stop, which which I can totally understand. Where is it in your experience of this pain that? It comprises a resistance to what the kundalini is trying to do with you. So, for instance, if uh, you're a meat eater and all of a sudden the kundalini says, well, I want you to be vegetarian now, and but you go ahead and you eat meat anyway because it's what you want to do. It's how you like to live. And the kundalini begins to punish you for this because you entered into an agreement even before you took the body to have the kundalini the kundalini and you know you have the kundalini and you decide to go against it anyway you just, you just, the prime rib is just too darn good <laughs> or that T-bone steak or whatever 
and you go ahead and you purposely resist the Kundalini and you start developing some real problems with your digestive tract. You see where I'm going with this? So it, it, it's really not open to you having control over it. it because it knows you better than you know yourself and it knows the, the dynamic of spiritual evolution better than the five sense human being can ever know it. Then you need to pay attention, and part of paying that paying attention is to stop resisting its presence within you or, or its agenda within you. It's very important that you begin to accept the Kundalini agenda as your agenda, and yes, that may involve kriyas. You may have to have kriyas. A good friend of mine's been having kriyas for four and a half years, and we're not talking little ones, okay? Everybody's got that unique aspect to their equation. Steve will have one thing, Tim will have another, Amelia will have something else, and Eileen's will be completely different. You know, that is the typical scenario. And yet we will have some similarity. And it's in those similarities that allow us to help each other and to support each other as we as we go forward on this path. Okay, so if you have a question about your Kundalini Awakening experience, uh, feel free to call 347-934-0026 and I'd be happy to take your question as best as myself and the, and the, and the Kundalini within me is able to take it. Uh, and let's see. Let me do another reading here. This is a creation reading from the Rishis. Sorry about all the noise here. This is the hymn of creation. And uh, once again, I'd like you to listen to the voice. Close your eyes and see what is being given to you. The hymn of creation. Then what is not was not. What is, was not. The intervening divine motion of creation was not, nor yet the expanse of heaven to shelter that motion. Was it hid? Where? By whose enveloping care? Was it water? The fathomless abyss? Then, death was not. Immortal life was not. Nor any distinction of night and day. Without aid of breath, by inherent might, that one breed of a certainty beyond. That was none other. In the beginning, pregnant darkness was by dissolving darkness secretly enfolded, unformed, unseparate, that fluid was this entire creation. While the boundless source of being was by unformed being thus enclosed, that one, through light of knowledge, brought itself forth to be. In the beginning, Self-delight, love, and desire evolved on that and were together the first germ of mind. By power of mind, the poets penetrated the heart and found there was the bond of truth in illusion. Out went their line crosswise. Was there above? Was there below? Progenitors were there. Powers to magnify were there. From below, pure potency for self-birth. From above, the force to move, raise, and fill. Who truly knows? Who here could proclaim whence born, whence this detailed self-expression? Of this the gods limitedly, reverently are in virtue 
of this flowing utterance. Now, who knows whence it became? Whence this detailed self-radiance came, whether created or not, only in the highest heaven, who is of this witness, knows whether it knows or not. That is, that is actually to be sung, believe it or not. That is the hymn of creation, and that's given to us. Uh, by the Rishis. So let's see. Looks like uh, we don't have any callers, and I'm going to go ahead and and uh, bring this conversation to a close because, you know, I'm I'm here at 1:30 in the morning, and these walls are thin. I don't want to. So I appreciate everybody who has come to listen, and I appreciate everybody who's listening in the archives. And uh, Amelia Centara, thank you. Eileen, thank you. And all the callers, Tim, Steve, questions were wonderful. And the presence of Julie and Fasci and, and the other folks, uh, Rosemary, thank you. And uh, Eileen, if you would give another, uh, uh, give another announcement about your Minnesota seminar. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, the seminar will be at the end of September, September 27th and 28th. Uh, everyone is invited. And if you have uh, questions, you will need to get in touch with uh, Rosemary. Um, and I don't have her email in front of me. So, 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 so give them yours. Oh, okay. My email is E-L-O-R-O-5-5 at yahoo.com and we hope to see many people there thank you thank you Eileen all right my dear and uh, um, Amelia any last words for this conversation thank you for this conversation Chris and just to say that um, Tim said thank you for what you said about fear and just to let Welcome, you know Tim. that. Um, thank you very much, and I look forward to next week's conversation. All right, everybody. Good night. <laughs>